Yo, what's up? Welcome to episode 33 of Throwback Hoops. My name is Rob Clayton, and joining me as he does every week is Woody V. Woods, how's it going, mate? Good, man. Fresh off the plane from Adelaide, you know, caught up with our good friend Stu from the Sport Bloke. So, you know, feeling good, man, to be back in Sydney, but miserable weather, you yeah? know? Yeah, it's not the best, is it? Pretty cold, actually, sitting here wearing a jersey today, a little bit cold, but nah, all good. So, look, just a reminder where to find us, everyone. So, um, obviously, the YouTube is up on YouTube each week, um, and if you're listening to the audio, it's available where all podcasts are found. Please make sure you like, rate, and subscribe. Okay, so we're very excited to bring a very special guest today. Um, a man that has covered the NBL for over 20 plus years, working with the NBL, Sydney Kings, Fox Sports, and Clutch Radio. He's currently the host of the NBL Roundtable podcast, as well as commentating NBL One with the Inner Inner West Bulls. He's also regarded as the number one Sydney Kings historian <laughs> in the country. So it's with great pleasure we would like to welcome Matt McQuaid to the show. Guys, it's an absolute honour. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here, Matt. Um, really appreciate it. I know we sort of talked about this a while ago, and I'll probably talk about a little NBL one connection at the moment, but no, mm. great to have you on. Um, probably a fitting moment as well to get two massive um, diehard Sydney Kings people on the show. And um, the show. those that watch the show know that one of those isn't me. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We know yeah, that, so, no, we know I'm, that, I'm, man. I'm, sure I'm not gonna be that. I'm not gonna be unkind to to the anybody in the Red Army. <laughs> Everybody knows I love the Red Army. It's been well documented. I love the Wildcats. I'm the one that coined the term gold standard, so, you know, good, any, like any Perth fans, I'm not going to go crazy on Rob today. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Thank you. Might go crazy on the people that run the team, that's another story, but I've already, I've already done that. We heard you, we've heard you, we've heard you, man, we've heard you. <laughs> good stuff. All right, so Matt, you know that everyone that comes on the show has to wear a jersey and maybe talk a little bit about the player, so who have you, who have you got for us? Oh, today? well... Who else? I mean, 33. It's Ooh. I got this, I think this is about 20 plus years old. I think that I got this the last time I was in Boston at the TD North at the TD North Garden at the pro shop there. Um, yeah, of course, it's my all-time favourite player, athlete, whatever you want. It wasn't much of an athlete, but anyway. <laughs> the greatest player I ever saw, Larry Bird. And, um, you know, I, I was very, very fortunate in 19, 3rd of January 1990, I got believe it or not, courtside tickets at the old Boston Garden and got to see him play. Um, the guy who's the media director and still is the media director to this day, Jeffrey Twist, I wrote him a letter. He wrote back and, and said I was coming to Boston, you know, would love to go. And he said, I'm going to organise tickets for you and got me courtside, literally courtside tickets. Actually wrote an article about the whole experience for one of the very, very early Australian basketball newspapers back in the day. It's actually the first article I ever wrote and got published, wow. believe it or not. Is that so like this pro, is pro basketball today, or one of those sort of ones, or the one before, the one before that, then? It's so like I can't. Really, it was either a Australian basketballer, or yeah. it might have been a Australian bar. It was one of those. It was a paper, but it was nice. before it was before PBT because nice. I'm going go on to my work with them, obviously, yeah. for for years and years. But um, yeah, so um, it, look, what can you say? He's, he's he's the reason that I got into basketball in the first place, and well, the main reason. Uh, and uh, yeah, just what can you say? All NBL, all NBL, NBL, all NBA first team for I think nine straight seasons. Only one of three people in NBA history to win three straight MVPs. The other two Definitely. being Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell. Yep. Um, although you know, I'm sure people are yelling, Michael should have won more than three in a row. Give, Obviously, give it back, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Charles, well, Charles, I can forgive, not not Malone. Give me nah, a break. That was anyway, ordinary, wasn't it? that was ordinary. But um, yeah, I mean, three NBA championships, Olympic gold medalist, National College Player of the Year. I mean, just go on and on. One of the 50 greatest players, or one of the <laughs> one of the five greatest players of all time, in my opinion. Uh, so uh, yeah, and um, as I said, I, I think it's one it's one of those things. You know, people talk about when they I've got friends that went to the United Center and saw Jordan, and other people that went to the Forum and saw Magic, and how much it meant to them. So for me, doing going to the old Boston Garden, not the new one, I've been to both, yep. but the old one, um, and being courtside, and he was this close. That's amazing. Like it was right there. The only thing I regret, I was actually with someone at the time. I, I came with someone. Jeff Twist actually invited me into the dressing room and I couldn't go. 
after Damn. the game. And he gave me, I, I had, I've still got the media, he gave me a media pass, all the media kit for the game, just an, um, Jeff Twist, I mean, that the Celtics have actually got an award named after him um, for public relations. He's he's a legend, uh, just an amazing guy. And just to, to be there and and, um, and to see Bird, and he nearly had, they played Washington, yeah. and Washington, they were the Bullets then, so that was, Bernard King was playing for them wow. after he, left the Knicks and um, Harvey Grant, who ironically uh, is um, mm, a, a, a Kings, isn't it? very yeah. connected. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Jeray Grandstad, he yeah. was playing for Washington. Yeah. And uh, incredibly, and here's another NBL connection. Um, in 2000, November 2000, I went and saw him play. They played the Clippers. And playing for the Celtics was none other than Doug Overton. Yeah, right. And for yeah. the 1992 Illawarra Hawks, right? Oh, yeah, one of the greatest absolutely. single season. He was a bench player for the Celtics in that game. Yep. And that was that was um, Antoine Walker, Paul Pierce, Rick Patino, And and the funniest thing, though, there was, there was a guy playing for the Celtics called Vitaly Potopenko. Yep. We know who he is. <laughs> yeah, right. And yeah. there was a guy sitting in front of sitting in front of me. I had great seats because it wasn't even full because the Celtics were... No, they weren't good at that stage. Mm-hmm. And that was the Clippers of Quentin Richardson, Lamar Odom, Corey Majette, you know, those guys. And they all wore headbands, remember that? Yeah, the Headband yeah. Clippers. Anyway, Patino was the coach. And every time Potter Penko got the ball or got on the court, this guy, this big, huge Bostonian would yell, Pass the ball, Potter Penko! Pass the ball! <laughs> Pass the ball. That's, I swear to God, that's what it was like. <laughs> Unbelievable. This went on the whole. Whenever he was on, pass the ball, part of Banco. It's just one of those things you never forget. But yeah, um, And then Antoine Walker hitting his first four shots and then going, doing Antoine Walker things and going completely stupid. And the crowd just giving it to him. <laughs> I mean, the own crowd. So, but it was, a, it was a great experience. But I mean, the, the, the Larry Bird experience, because that was, you know, um, Mikhail was there, Reggie Lewis, God rest his soul. Yeah. Um, you know, he yeah. he was on that team and, and I got to see him play and yeah, it was um it was an amazing experience. I mean and, and it was the the garden then, I mean it was it wasn't yeah. dumped. It was but it was legendary. You know, look up and and then I saw Red Alback, it's oh my god, Red Alback. I mean give me a break and all these Koozie was there and it was just that's what used to happen at those games that all the old Celtics would show up. So anyway, I've gone on too long, but right. it's um that's kind of my my Celtics fandom and kind of brilliant, you know, encapsulated. Great story, yeah. no, I really appreciate it, man. And yeah, what a mm. better story than sitting front row of the, the, the old. Hey, and, and what a great people don't fact. believe me. I got photos. I got photos to prove it. People don't believe me to this day, but it was because of Jeff Twist. He organised so, the tickets. I'll tell you what, Woods, before we get you to your jersey, I actually hadn't um, preempted this with Matt. I knew he was going to wear, obviously, a Celtics jersey today, so I brought this out just to show off. <laughs> oh, you're joking. Yeah, yeah I've got... I've, somebody got one, that exact thing for me for Christmas. How good's the hair? I heroin? kid you not. Yeah. I know, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty good. So, <laughs> so, no, so I was going to... did that one today. But... And I was going to show you... The, remember I talked to... I, I've got another jersey I wanted to show you guys because it's it's super random. Oh, you did but there's, there's that. French there's a big, right? there's a big story. Yeah, that's right. There's a big story behind this. Mm. So that's the jersey. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah. It's the Shanghai Sharks, and um, that's the back of it. So there's, you'll notice there's a signature. Mm. So the signature is a gentleman by the name of Gershon Yabaselli. Yeah, we know who he is. Yeah. Yeah, Frenchman, he is. Frenchman, Boston Celtic. That's right. Yep. Correct. Yep. So the reason I have that, and the reason he signed that, is because. Brian Gorgian gave it to me as a present uh, about through, well, when he came back from Shane, he was working as a special advisor for the Sharks. And um, yeah, and he obviously, Brian knows how much of a psychotic Celtics fan. I mean, <laughs> me and Luke Kendall, um, the assistant coach for the Phoenix, had this yep. thing where who's the biggest Celtics fan? We've had this argument for like, how long have I known Kendall? Nearly 20 years. <laughs> it's like, who's the biggest one? So Gorge obviously knows that. And um, yeah, God bless him. He, he brought me a, got gave a silly to sign it. And so that's my random Shanghai Sharks jersey. Yep. I'm not, I don't have a lot of jerseys. Obviously, I've got a few bird ones, but 
uh, and, a, and a few Kings ones, clearly. But, um, yeah, you, I've got a, I've got like a Patrick Ewing Atlanta one, actually, Hawks as well. Fans as well Matt. So we're both Atlanta Hawks fans, but there's no, oh, nice. there's, there's no question I'm the bigger fan than him because he's a bit of a... <laughs> he's, he's swapped teams a few times and followed players. But I've been for the Hawks since the mid-'80s, right, Woods? So I've got you yeah, covered yeah, yeah, Oh, well, that, sure. if you're mid-'80s, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah I'm that's late, legit. I'm late-'90s, right? I was a Jordan guy till he left the league, and then, you know, I changed allegiances to the Hawks. But um, <laughs> actually, Yabush- Yabushelli, is that how you said, man? He had a great... Uh, Campaign with France in, in, in the in the in the Olympics, you know, and it was, it was nice to see him play alongside Nicolo and all those guys. And um, yeah, he had a, a sip of coffee there with the Celtics, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah the yeah. dancing bear, and yeah. and you know, he was he was. I mean, he's he's having a great. He's had a great career. I mean, yeah. he's in Europe playing Euro League now. Yeah, he's got a big contract um, for three years now. I think I saw. So yeah, no, I, I've always followed him, um, and and I, I'd hoped. I mean, remember there was that talk he was going to be like a, the French Draymond Green? That yep, was kind of the, sure. the comp that they gave him, but it was unfortunate that it um, didn't work out with the Celts. But anyway, there you go. Very Super cool. random jersey. Love, love it. Love that one. We love the random jerseys. How about you show us what you got on this week, Woods? I know Matt's going to love this. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Nice throwback to the 90s, this one. So the number oh, Morrissey. Straight away. <laughs> so for those that can't see the video, Woody's standing up wearing an old school Tim Morrison, uh, Tim Morrison Sydney Kings jersey. What's that about mid nineties woods, man? Yeah, I think this is yeah, maybe even early nineties, man. I think early maybe yeah. Early. Early yeah, ninety two, ninety-three. And I'll tell you something, man, when we were young, like, you know, dad, mom used to take me to, to King's Games from about eighty nine and like we just loved Tim Morrissey. Like he, we, we idolized him in my, in my house, me and my brother. And um, we had this thing, Ma, we, we want to get a Tim Morrissey haircut. So she would take <laughs> us, she would take us to the barber, and she'd like do the little mushroom cut around the head. So oh we, and she, my would, gosh. She, she would straighten our hair for us with a blow dryer so we could look like Tim Morrissey. So. It was awesome. He was just like an idol in our household and, um, you know, fond memories of, of me first moving to Australia and uh, getting involved in something, you know, being a, an immigrant coming to this country and looking for friends. Basketball was a big way for me to sort of break down barriers. And, uh, and uh, um, the Sydney Kings from a, from a young age were a big part of my life. But uh, I'll, I'm going to ask you a little bit about what you remember about Tim Morrissey, Matt, but just quickly... Um, <laughs> Look, tenacious defender. We had uh, Brad Rosen on the show recently, and he was telling us about how Mario Donaldson would come in on Mondays and he wouldn't miss a shot. Mario Mondays, they called it, and Tim Morrissey would be hawking him. You know, wouldn't 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 let him get free open, but he'd still knock down shots. But tenacious defender he was. Um, we kind of forget about you know he he represented uh, Australia at junior and senior level, and he then just forged a really great career. Now is the pretty sure he's the head of. Head of the whole sporting department at, at the Daily Telegraph, right? If I correct. correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. And uh, no, that's right. He, and he's uh, covered the AFL and other sports, and really built a good career outside of basketball. But before that, you know, yeah, that 13 seasons in the in uh, in the league, right? So um, maybe I'll throw over to you, Matt, and you can tell us a little bit about what you remember about the the great man himself. <laughs> I went to university with him, so and I, I played basketball with his brother at uni. Ben Morrissey, yeah. No, well, actually, I played I played high school um, rep ball with Ben. Oh yeah. So I know I know the Mor- and it was his brother Daniel. Oh, the word. third one. Okay, yeah. Because uh, I went to the University of Wollongong, so yep. Um, so I've known Tim forever, and I know the family extremely well. Have done for many years. Um, yeah, pretty much as you described, Woody. I mean, obviously, one of the great role players, I think, yep. in King's history. I think that the thing that people most remember is the booze, especially in Melbourne. Yep. And there's, and there's yeah. two, there's like, I mean, there's two incidents with Tim that kind of sum Tim's experience up with the Kings. One was in 1989, game one of the, uh, well, it was quarterfinal series against Melbourne. He um, was defending a guy by the name of David Colbert, who yep. was an import. We know. Unfor- <laughs> and unfortunately, <laughs> another one, another one that passed away yep. as, as well, unfortunately, years ago. And um, I, this happened right in front of me. I'll, ne- I'll never forget. He was so Colbert was so annoyed with what Tim was doing. He hit him with this massive forearm shot to the back of the head and splayed him out. Got kicked out for the series. That actually won the series for the King. I mean, yep. We won game one. They won game two, but Colbert was he was suspended for the series, so we won game three by two in Melbourne at the Gla- the old glass house it was. That was one. And then the other one, which was the same seat was it the same season or ninety? Was it either eighty nine or ninety, um, Kent Lockhart and very yep. infamous headbutt uh, again at the glass house. And um, yeah, and it, it was funny, Tim always used to say that when he heard all the boos um, in eighty nine, he just pretended they were yelling moose. As in Ian Moose Rebellion, yeah, 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 for the team, yeah, right? Yeah. 
So, but yeah, great, tremendous athlete, obviously. Great, and you, great defender. I mean, that, that's what he made his bones yeah, of. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, did, some, did some things for us from a scoring perspective. Wasn't a great shooter. I mean, it just wasn't no. his go. But yeah, I mean, one of those role players everybody needs. Um, and sort of unfortunate that uh, he and a lot of other guys of that era didn't get a ring. Now, I mean, he beat, played 322 games, guys. 9.7 points, 3.7 rebounds. So, you know, he did contribute, you know, and that was, that was the 48-minute era. Um, and, and he gets slept on when we talk about the great kings of all times. He doesn't get a mention, but, you know, he served uh, our franchise with distinction for a long time. And even Body, when he was on our show, spoke about that incident with Dave Colbert with fond memories as well. So um, yeah. that's something that, I, that that's etched in my memory as well, Matt. So, so yeah. thanks for giving us some insight, man, onto... On what, a, on what a great man that Tim was. And it's nice to know that um, you've built that relationship with him since you were young and, and kept that going all these years, you know? So, yeah, yeah, and I mean, he, look, at the end of the day, foundation memory of the Kings in 88. And you, Absolutely. That, I, I just think, you know, those guys need to be celebrated a bit more than they are, to yeah, be honest with you. For sure, man, yeah. Definitely. That uh, era. Of course, Woody, he led a few of those um, NBA tours with my brother in the late 90s as well, when they yeah. sort of watched NBA games. Yep, yep, yep. yep. There was some association with maybe Pro Basketball Today, which you were obviously with as well. There was, yeah, in, for yeah. a while back in the yeah. day, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, very good. All right, well, I'm going to show my one. So I thought I'd sort of just, I guess, link it to the NBA conference finals at the moment, talk a little bit about uh, the man Jason Kidd. Um, so look, what I like to do, Matt, is just because my jersey collection is so ridiculous, I have two each episode, <laughs> so I'll have one hanging up so you can see the old school uh, New Jersey Nets, Jason Kick there. really like that jersey, actually. Um, yeah, and look, I'll classic. Just quickly stand up and show the one I'm wearing there, so it's an old school Phoenix Suns one. Yeah, so for all our audience that are tuning into the audio show, Robbie's wearing a Phoenix Suns Jason Kidd jersey and that kid the font is extremely large on the back of that jersey yeah, man enormous, right yeah what, like, is, what is it what is that it's a, a small like you know not many um letters in the surname maybe but the first thing i thought when i got it out like my goodness that's ginormous there is i think they did go through a little bit of an era where they were doing that with those champion jerseys but yeah so you'll certainly know who it is if you see this one going around so um look just a little bit about jason kidd there um so he played 19 seasons in the nba after getting drafted by dallas at pick two in the 94 draft out of california um, quick little segue on that. I remember we used to get those ABC NCAA games on a Friday night. I remember when the California yeah. Bears were on. I remember there was all the hype about Jason Kidd. Sat down and watched that game with my brother. He actually had a pretty bad game from memory, but I remember just seeing the guy just, you know, getting the ball off the boards and just running the ball up the court. And I thought, oh, this guy's going to be something, um, you know, pretty something special. Of course, he had no jump shot back then. Obviously, people used to call him Ace and Kid because he literally had no J. Um, <laughs> and he turned true. out to be a pretty handy three-point shooter. So, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. So, look, he played um, with Dallas for two seasons before being traded to Phoenix, um, and he also played with New Jersey and New York. Um, his accolades include, there's quite a lot, um, he was obviously an NBA champion in his second stint with the Mavs in 2011. Um, he was a 10-time NBA All-Star, um, six-time All-NBA, nine-time defensive All-NBA team, which I thought was pretty interesting. Nine times is pretty decent there. Um, Co-Rookie of the Year, of course, with Grant Hill in 95. Um, and also a five-time NBA assist leader, which is pretty impressive. I believe he's um, still ranked number two in assists and steals in NBA history, I think. The last time I sort of saw that anyway. Yep. Um, and also, yeah, he was a two-time Olympic gold medalist um, in Sydney and Beijing. He was named to that NBA 75th anniversary team. Of course, as we know, he's the current head coach of the Dallas Mavs. So I've got to say, I think he's done a pretty good job this year. Oh. You know, the, the roster hasn't changed a whole lot from last year's team. We, you know, we, could, we saw that team unable to get out of the first round. So I think full credit to Kidd there. I think he's come in and maybe sort of, I think he's probably uh, learnt a bit after his last few stints. Absolutely, stints there. yeah. He's you know, a little bit more sort of player focused and everything like that now. So... No, Jason Kidd. Um, and Woods, do you reckon I've got a Jason Kidd, Kidd bobblehead? Of course you do, man. Of course you do. Of course you do, brother. I do. Right, I've got this one. That's old school New Jersey Nets. Goodness Jason me. Kidd. That's great um, stuff. Some footlocker looking thing. So another one of those stadium giveaway <coughs> ones that I managed to acquire online all those years ago. So... Hey, yeah, and, and Robbie, man, you know, we, we like to put people on the spot, right? Maybe you put me on the spot, you know, I put I you like on the spot. On the spot. Yeah. What about we put Matt on the spot, right? All right. Oh, no. <laughs> Matt, okay, Matt. So Jason Kidd was joined Rookie of the Year with? Joined Rookie of the Year. Wow. No, you got me. Grand Hill. 
Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. People always talk about that now. Oh, why can't they just give him a, a joint rookie of the year? Well, it was actually just with votes that wasn't that time. It wasn't like, you know, the voters couldn't decide, oh, we'll give him a joint. It actually came down to equal votes. There, but... And the other joint rookie of the year, Robbie, who are they? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Is there any? I don't think there is any. There's one more. One more. Are we going back before that time? Or? Yep. Oh, no, after. After. 2001, I think. 2000, 2001, maybe. 2001. Uh, nah, Elton ahead. Brand and Steve Franchise. Steve Francis. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Well, appreciate that, fellas, going through and sort of talking a little bit about the jersey. So, why don't we get straight into a bit of a chat with Matt there? Um, Word. Let's do it. Obviously, we could probably talk to, to Matt all day with you know. <laughs> stuff I bore you. Hey, man. We say we say this, Matt. You ready to chop it up? Chop it up. I'm ready. That's right. You do. You're yeah. ready to chop it up. I'm ready to chop it up. There we go. Here we go. Look, so as we know, Matt's, Matt's covered the game for two decades plus. Um, just wanted to sort of find out what sort of first got you um, into basketball, Matt. Um, well, it goes back to 1979. And um, it was really, that was when the NBL started. And uh, it was also Larry Bird's rookie year, 79-80. Uh, and, and Apart from the NBL starting, it then became, or even before then, actually, when I think about it, uh, probably uh, early in 79, uh, Channel 7 used to do Sunday games uh, of the NBA. And it was always Celtics, Knicks, Sixers, Lakers, pretty much. That was pretty much who, who it was. And, and I remember seeing the Celtics, well, they weren't very good in 78, 79, but it still piqued my interest. And then... I got asked to, I started playing basketball at school. I'd never played before in 79. Uh, and then the NBL started. Uh, and then after that was Larry Bird's rookie year. So that kind of, you know, cemented it. So just started it. And then from then on in, yeah, it, it just became, it was funny. It was just a game that captured me straight away. And I came from a rugby league background. I mean, I played rugby league pretty much as a kid from five all the way up to 11. And, Ironically, the school I went to didn't, as a, from year five, didn't have rugby league. They played union, which I played one year of and what, hated. Game. Yeah. I hated it, absolutely hated it. So it was basketball. So that that's what I, I got into. Um, it was actually someone that I met at school that we became friends with, who was a really he was really good. At, you know, even back then, uh, he got me playing, and um, yeah, and just never stopped. Um, and then obviously, you know, the fandom with the NBL and with and obviously, you know, it was back in those days, you'd be scratching to find little nuggets of information in the paper about basketball, whether it be NBA or NBL, yep. regardless. So I would go out to Alexandria as a little kid and run around. And we, you know, as, as the years went on, we used to play all these different tournaments in, in like Condell Park, which is where the Bruins played. Alexandria, where initially they were called the Astronauts and they became the Supersonics yep. in 82. And then... They had this amazing team in 83, um, which were still the only Sydney team ever to go undefeated um, at home in a regular season of the NBL, the Supersonics with Owen Wells and Brad Dalton and Ronnie Cavanaugh, who's an interesting story because he played one year for the Supersonics then went to the US, played for the Knicks and actually started for the wow. Knicks in a couple of games. And it's kind of the answer to a trivia question. There were three centres that started for New York the year before they drafted Patrick Ewing and Ronnie Cavanaugh was one of them. And this was a guy that I saw play at Alexandria for the oh, Sydney wow. Supersonics. It's crazy. Was Mark crazy. Ridland on those old teams, Matt, or was that... No, Ridland, Ridland came in 87. Okay. So this is like, yeah, this is well before that. Oh, so I, I was I was really getting it, like 83 and then 84. And then 84 was a complete disaster. The Supersonics just about folded. Then Michael Blesky comes in buy and everything changes buys them moves them out to homebush the old state sports center yeah. from 85 and i used to go to pretty much every game them and the bruins then they they became the west stars in 86 anyway so then and obviously then the kings in 88 um and that again changed life um and they were there for, for two years and obviously i was one of the very still am one of the very first season ticket holders i think i was like the 15th person to sign up yeah and that's and it's kind of been that connection for forever, you know, since then. Um, and uh, obviously through the '90s and, and everything that happened at the entertainment center, and was lucky enough, you know, I mean, '92 was an unbelievable experience. Oh and yeah. Got very, you know, man, luckily got very, very close with Dwayne McLean and, and went on the road with him a oh, bunch. Amazing. I, mean, I, awesome. I went everywhere that year. It was unbelievable. Um, so um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
got got known for actually where I, I again I got a, a white Celtics jacket from Boston and I used to wear it to Kings games and I got myself on television you will not believe how many times I mean <laughs> I was on these promos for Wild World of Sports I was Channel 10 this unbelievable I mean it, it's I'm on YouTube and not just with Kaiso we'll get to him in a minute but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to him in a minute but um, yeah. so all through the 90s obviously and 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 how, how the media stuff started was actually, you mentioned Pro Basketball Today, that's how it started. So in 1999, um, PBT was, the, well, they, they were getting a lot of people, just random kind of people to do season previews of their own teams. So they were going city to city and, and I kind of read a few of them, thought, ah, you know, I fancy myself. So I, I did one and, and they you know, asked for some feedback and they said, this is great. Can you do one for the whole league? I went, sure, did that. They said, do you want to gig like regularly? I said, sure. So that's how that started from 1999. And then the Kings stuff started on the back of that because then I got asked to do the very early, very, very early website stuff, content stuff with the Kings and also write for their game night programs. So that we used to give out at, at the stadium. This is when they'd moved to the, um, the what was then known the Superdome, obviously. So, um, yeah, and it, it just has gone on since then. And, um, and then 07, 08, the NBL, who had a really, really bad contract with Fox Sports at the time, and hardly anybody watched the league, they, re they realized they needed another outlet. So those were the first radio um, broadcasts. For, and not every team did it, but the Kings did it. And ironically, it was Derek Rucker, who I have to thank. He's the one that said, we want you to do play-by-play -play and I want you to do it with Bruce Bolden. So Bruce and I did 07 08, that amazing 27 and three regular season. And yep. um, yeah, and, and that's how that part started. And then the TV part started in 2011, I think it was 2011, 2012, we started streaming preseason games um, and we did a whole bunch of colleges. I mean, one, one we did that I remember was um, New Mexico with Cam Bearstar. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, and that um, Tony Snell, we, right? Yeah, that was just up. So it wasn't Tony. He, yeah. he, it was a year after he got drafted. Right, and, okay, and yeah. It was Bairstow and... Um, oh, who's the other Australian kid? I've forgotten. Oh, my God. How, I'm, my brain is gone. Got signed by Perth and then ended up playing AFL. Oh, That's yeah. Oh, Greenwood. Yeah. Ca Greenwood. Thank yeah. you. Greenwood. Thank you. Yeah. Huge. They used to, yeah. in, in Mexico, they called him huge. Yeah, yeah. Greenwood. Yeah, Greenwood. So he was yeah. playing. So they played the Kings at Bankstown and we got like 50,000 people... Would you believe? Um, because they're all mad. New Mexico, they're all crazy fans. So we did that. And then as time went on, other things happened. And then did the first NBL Blitz at North Sydney, which was 2013, I think, or 2014. I was actually at that one for each day there. Yeah, Yeah, you would, have, you would have seen me doing it with Brad. So yeah, I did it with Brad Rosen. There wasn't people there, was there, watching those? No. Like, that was the no. James Ennis year, wasn't it, if I'm remembering Correct. Right. Yeah, that was, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that was his first year. So, so then, and then, yeah, and then, on the Twitter page from that there, there wasn't a lot of people there, but now I remember yeah. I was doing that. So, so yeah, so I sort of jumped ahead from, from 99 to 05, I wrote for PBT and then PBT, that was their last year in 05. And then the NBL then asked me to do stuff for them. And I was doing a regular column for the NBL website and got, and then they took me on all these trips to Darwin. We did all the NBL preseason tournaments, Darwin a couple of times, Cairns. Um, Dan Denong, um, yeah, and then, so then, yeah, the, the, the Blitz was the first, um, in North Sydney was the first one we did, and then we did the one in Brisbane, um, and then the NBL did, and I think it was Brisbane, then Townsville, then Brisbane, that was, Townsville was the one I did with Liam, that was his first, yep. that was actually he, Liam Sanderson's first foray into Well, um, we've heard you talk about it with, with him when he was on your show on the, on the round table recently about that. Yeah, the First time right. you guys worked together, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all those, all those years ago, it's hard to believe. Um, and he was, you know, I mean, he, look, he's obviously fantastic now, but he, you could see what was going to happen. He was just such a pro, yeah, you know, absolute pro from the start. So it's always been a plan. I've called many, many games with him, so... And yeah, just done a whole bunch of whole bunch of that. Did some called um, did some stuff for Fox Sports. Did um, the NBL All Australian Games um, against the Chinese national team. Called the CBA Finals as well with Steve Carfino. Wow. 
um, did that um, remotely, obviously. So I know, <laughs> I know those, I know how those guys in the hub feel because I've done it. Um, and um, yeah, called games for ABC Radio as well. And yeah, and, um, yeah, and, and always love doing it. Um, you know, um, unfortunate that I would love to have done the television, but you know, there's no Larry moved it to Melbourne, and that was pretty much all she wrote with that. So it's good to have this other outlet with um, with Clutch Radio. And yeah. I mean, really enjoyed doing that for last. Well, it's a couple of years before then we were doing um, kind of a community radio thing, but the clutch radio thing's just blown yeah. up. And it's it's we humble. I mean, um, Julian Marcus, who's the yeah. I call him the captain, obviously as you know, and um, he said to me the other what we actually tripled our listenership this year, which is incredible. That's yeah. great. Uh, and NBL, um, yeah, NBL, yeah, and we get a whole heap from overseas. Um, obviously, I became the number one fan. Or of Kai Soto in the Philippines. <laughs> Do we know? <laughs> Sweet potato analyst, as they call me. But um, yeah, it's 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 great. I, I love doing it, um, and I can't believe it's been twenty three years of writing and calling games and doing podcasts. And but I, you know, I, I'm uh, as I've said many times, uh, the NBL is something that means a lot to me, and having been a part of it since it all started, you know, all those years ago. No, it's great to hear the background there, Matt, and obviously sort of finding out. We like sort of asking that question as well, how people sort of first got into it. It's sort of great sort of hearing the history as well. Um, I wanted to ask you, look, you are known as that Sydney Kings historian. It's that tag <laughs> you sort of got there. So uh, obviously that means you're either, you either know a lot about the Sydney Kings team or you're really old. So, you know, both. So both. both, but I had a bit the, of a but the, the, the lack of hair should give it away. I mean, I'm, it's routed. <laughs> yeah, I'll be. Uh, this ain't going to last that much longer. Let me tell you. Start wearing the hat all the time. Like, yeah, that's know? right. Yeah, exactly. What's the man bun going on, man? You know. Oh, nice. I like. <laughs> Go away, Woody. I hate you. Too much hair, brother. Too much hair. <laughs> No, Go on, Is that a <laughs> no, you gave some great answers there. One sort of question I wanted to sort of ask that you know probably didn't sort of have maybe on the run sheet was how are you feeling when the Kings sort of you know went out of business for those couple of years in the forties oh. the there? That must have been like you know just something well, that we weren't imagining and, and sort of I knew it was coming. Years. Yeah, so you knew well, it was coming. And did you I knew. They, did you think they'd end up coming back like they did? Uh, it was it was really unlikely. I mean, this was a two year deal, right? And. Um, Obviously, I, I was in that 07 08 season, I was basically the de facto media um, comms person for the Kings. I pretty much did everything for them, and um, as well as call games. And I mean, the joke was always that I was always the last out of the entertainment center whenever we played because I do the radio, then I do the press conference, then I had to then have to write the game report, and then go, you know, and then go. And that generally wasn't until about midnight, pretty much. But um, yeah, it was a really, really difficult time because. That, that, I mean, that team, that 07 08 team was just so special because those guys went, and I knew exactly what was going on. I mean, Amanda Gorgian, Amanda was in the front office, yeah. Brian's wife, yeah. and she was running it. And she, amazing, you know, and, and um, so we would spend a lot of time talking <laughs> about things. And I mean, those guys weren't paid for like six months. Yep. Six months. It was insane. Like, mm -hmm. they would have meetings every day. What's happening? Are we going to get the money? Blah, blah, blah. And they basically banded together and just said the hell with it we, we it, it's like the world's against us we're just going to go in um and just keep swinging we don't yep. we're going to keep playing most most teams would have just filed it then and there and they really should have really when you think about it because there were guys that couldn't put food on the table they had kids families yep yeah. it's just it's insane the livelihood people, man, yeah. and that team you know people ask me what's your favorite king's team that one is because we well, didn't even win a championship because what those boys went through and to go 27 and 3 27, they won 90% of their games. The third best record in, in NBL history in the regular season. And then they went, for, they were absolutely destroyed with injury um, by the time game five against the yeah. Northern Tigers rolled around. I mean, Jason Smith done his shoulder. Were they done his calf? Dante Draper did his hamstring. Uh, it was just, they were a mess. You know, Matt, the, the, the fact they won game four was a mess. I, Dante Draper in those last few minutes of game four just won it for him, put the team on his back. And then Sean Lampley, man, I was there. Massive crowd. D Max last game ever, right? Yeah. That was, I mean, that was such a great crowd that came and got behind that team. That, in game, in, in five, game five. Yeah. It was unbelievable, man. What an experience to be yeah. part of that crowd at that game was just unreal, man. And uh, yeah. yeah, I remember that day very fondly, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's. Yeah, and then and then obviously when that when that finished, we were all devastated because yep. we knew that was pretty much the done deal. I knew Brian was going, yep. and 
Um, I, I tried to convince him to stay, but it was already a done deal. He was gone, and, and so was we, though. And then, then obviously, uh, and I'll never forget this, I was at the press conference in the NBL offices, which were at Mascot at the time, yep. where Chuck Harmison, who was the acting CEO, read the press statement that said the, the license had been revoked, and I just remember feeling empty. Mm. Now, I mean, my NBL, uh, I was very fortunate, because obviously we had the... For one year, even though it was a debacle, the Sydney Spirit debacle, but um, yeah, yeah. Rob, that was Rob Beveridge and and uh, a whole bunch of Matt, you know, Matty Knight and Damien Martin, a whole yeah. bunch of people that I'm very close with as well, Bevo in particular. Um, and uh, but that fell apart, and so there was no Sydney team for a, a year, basically. And so I put it this way: I was spending a lot of time on the Hawks media bench in yep. Wollongong. <laughs> you were saying that every, every game. Yeah, you're driving there, uh, you know, quite often. All you were saying time. that on the last episode of the of the roundtable, man. I yeah. heard you speak about it. Yeah. So I mean, having said all of that, right? Let me just jump in here, Robbie, if you don't mind, right? Um, it's like after all of those hardships, you know, you know, and and being out of the league and coming back into the league, right? You know, I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge Kings fan, just like you, right? And I, and I've been my whole life, right? So. I mean, no one's watched more games than you, right? So that, 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 that must have been a tough period. But to see the Kings mm. come back now oh, yeah. and come back and win this championship last yeah. week, I mean, that must have meant something to you, man. I'm, I know it did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. know it did, oh, right? Of course. Like, yeah. of course. I mean, 17 years and yep. since the last one, um, not even knowing if we'd have a team. And, and even, even when we came back, I mean, you know, God bless the, the, the guys... Ricard Gardell, Stephen Dunn, Max, yep. uh, Ma- Max Schroeder, Bill Wavish, and others that brought it back. Yep. But unfortunately, you know, from 2010 to about 2016 or 15, um, the Kings were, you know, the, the, the brand was in huge trouble. And oh, yeah, when, definitely. Especially at the end of that, that, that final season when we finished 6-22, and 22, won the wooden spoon, um, one being in quotes, obviously. But um, it was... And then they were done. They, they just, they put money a lot of money in and weren't seeing any come back and the brand itself was damaged and then harvey lister comes in and not enough credit is given to him in my opinion comes in buys the team moves them to what was then called all phones arena then quickly got changed to what we now know as kudos bank arena and changed everything really um say what you want about the success on and off the court that's that's all fine and obviously what do you, you know, this is stuff I covered before on, on the podcast, but it is worth repeating. Yeah, for because, sure. Yeah. Look, Paul Smith is, and they've done, Paul Kind, Bogut, Longley, those guys, are, and Chris Pongrass in particular. Yep. Those guys have done a phenomenal job. Phenomenal Definitely. job. No doubt. They've taken this to another level. But it doesn't happen without Harvey Lister, number one, buying the Kings. Number two, and this is, people don't talk about this enough. Yep. Putting the scoreboard up. Oh, yeah. The scoreboard they had at the Kudos was from 2000 for the Olympics. It was terrible. Mm. They put this thing up, which is basically they went to Staples and they, they essentially wanted to copy what was at Staples. He spent $7 million to do that. Yeah. $7 million. I mean, the, the, the damn you know the um, salary cap is like 1.5 or whatever it is now. So a ton. Of, and that was a game changer, a massive game changer. Because what it, what they wanted to do was have that NBA experience, the game night experience. Yeah. Because they knew that's the only way you're going to... It's a tough place to... Look, we had an unbelievable crowd in game three, which we'll get to in a minute, obviously, the grand final. Yeah. But the, the reality is, it, Kudos, historically, has been a tough sell. Because you had the greatest location ever with the City Entertainment Center. I don't care Thumbs what anybody that. says. Awesome. The oh, greatest... Man. Amazing. I mean, I've Pump been house. every... <laughs> yeah, Pump House, Chinatown, <laughs> yeah. Darling Harbour, CBD. I mean, it was it was the ultimate. You just can't. I've been to every stadium in this country without a lie, and that is far and away the best ever. Not even close. No, nothing comes close. And yeah. you know, you remember what it was like, Woody. I mean, particularly loved in the it, 90s, man. Loved Wayne, it, man. It was yeah. like the whole the whole place. I mean, everybody wanted to be a part of it. You know, that that's what it was like. So anyway, so with with Kudos. Um, getting that whole experience built that they did, that Harvey Lister did, was phenomenal. And it kind of underpins what Paul and the rest of Paul Smith, that is, Paul Kind and Bogut Longley and Chris Pongrass have then just taken and elevated it, just gone to a completely different level now, completely different level. 
and the game night experience is just phenomenal there now. It's, I just it's, I just want to ask you about that game night experience. I know you've been saying it, it's such a great family day out. It's a great night yeah. out, and they put on a show. There's one thing that's really irking me, Matt. What about the Harlequins, man? Can we get some cheerleaders back, please? You are stuck with that one exception. The Har- I, I think that's a sin that the Harlequins aren't around. Anymore. Like, how are they not around? Oh, like, they've got to be. You've got to have cheerleaders at a basketball got, game. Yeah, that's right? the only thing I don't like. That's the one thing that's missing. I don't like. Because yeah. they've got the, the cheer squad or whatever they call oh, it. come on, man. We need the beautiful women because, you know, they're, they're trying to, like, replicate what the Lakers were doing with Paula Abdul and then the Lakers girls with the Harlequins. And the that's Kings did it really, was. it was amazing, right? They, um, were the, they, they were their own brand, Woody. That's yeah. the thing. They were their own distinct brand. For sure. And we really, when I when I got in there, I, I you know and, and did some work, uh, more media work. That was one of the things I really wanted to push. And I, when the um, Kira Howarth, who um, used to run yeah. the Harlequins, and yeah, a lo- lovely, lovely lady. She's friends married. with my boss, actually. Kira, oh, there you go. She's friends you know, with my boss. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. And we we were trying. To, I mean, it didn't go anywhere, unfortunately. But we were trying to kind of. I really wanted to. I wanted them to have their own website. I wanted them to have, you know, like a calendar. I wanted all that stuff. I just think. Yeah, it was kind of a, an opportunity wasted. So now, Woody, I'm total lockstep with you, my friend. Bring back the Harlequins. For That's sure. the only thing. I, but having said that, again, I, I still say yeah, the I game night experience is outstanding. Absolutely. You know, good day out for the family. We take Robbie's daughter there. I tried to make her an O'Kings fan early in life, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately it didn't <laughs> work, right? She's, um, indoctr- she's a red, red army indoctrinated. Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. All, all right. So look, I hear all this, right? And 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 uh, this is great. What's happening now? We, we're getting that that these massive crowds coming in for for game three, as you spoke of earlier. But you know, Sydney basketball fans we're a fickle bunch. In fact, Sydney sports fans in general can be that way, right? Very oh, pretentious. 100%. You know, our cl- our crowds fluctuate. Sometimes at Judas Bank Arena, we can you, you can see a completely empty stadium, and then. We can see the crowd be 16, 17,000. Even a Cairns game earlier in the year was, I think, about 13,000, right? We all remember the golden days, as we spoke about, with, you know, the Kenny McClarys, the Dwayne McLeans, and the King with the hottest ticket in town. You know, how do we build on this championship success, right? And use yeah. that momentum to bring the Sydney Kings into the main, mainstream in terms of New South Wales sporting teams over the coming years, right? Yeah, how do we do yeah. that, right? It's a, it's, it's a great question. I mean, yeah. and... You know, 16149 at Kudos for Game 3 was the third largest, third largest crowd in NBL history. So we've had the three biggest crowds in NBL history um, in, in that building uh, and obviously the biggest playoff crowd in NBL history. And that, you're 100% correct, Woody. The, the, the challenge has always been, <laughs> how do you convert the casual fan into a member? How do you convert the, you know, the person that's just come along because, oh, it's the Kings and it's exciting. And then I, I maintain that the whole Tasmania Jack Jumpers story had a lot to do with it. The fairy tale. Absolutely. talking oh, about 100%. it. 100%. So yeah. there's, there's reasons. I mean, the biggest crowd ever, and it's hilarious, the biggest crowd ever in NBL history, the 17514 um, two years ago, yep. was because of one person, LaMelo Ball. That's it. That's it. Everyone came to see LaMelo Ball. That, 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 you can't disprove that. That no. is an absolute stone cold fact. It was a regular season game. It was Lamelo Ball, and I'll never forget it. Any anything he did, the whole crowd went crazy. That's so. That's put that aside. It's yep. more about how do you get these people that sixteen thousand of which I think. Look, I don't know the exact numbers from the Kings as far as their actual memberships, but I doubt it's anything over no. two thousand, two and a half, three thousand tops. Maybe. Yeah. I, I look, and again, I have absolutely no knowledge of. I don't reckon whatsoever. even two thousand. I reckon somewhere between somewhere one thousand five hundred ish, give or take. Whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. your definition. Is, I yeah. mean, there's obviously different levels, right? So yeah. there's some that you could. They're, they're like three game members, and there's Ooh. six game men, all this sort of thing. So it's how you kind of you know Fair. think about those numbers, right? But in what you're saying, like full season tickets, like the Red Army, as yep. a perfect example. When when they say they've got twelve thousand members, they've got twelve thousand people that show up pretty much all the time. Yeah. COVID notwithstanding, obviously, the last yeah. few seasons. Yeah. But um, look, I always go back to the way it was in the 90s, and it was it's it's just doing everything smarter and everything harder than what the juggernauts like the AFL and NRL, that is, the schools schools programs have to be paramount. That it, it's, it's the, that's how the Wildcats have done it, and the community connection. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, and also... Um, really strong media presence and 
to be fair to the Kings, this year they brought in a guy called Julian O'Brien, who yeah, was know, yeah. the editor of the you know Julian, editor yeah. of the Illawarra Mercury last you know last year. Great guy, and and couldn't he's the perfect guy because understands the media, understands the importance of me. I've been at them, I've been at the Kings for years about this. Their lack of media engagement, you know, it's just not been good enough. But Julian this year, yeah. nah. He's gone to another level with his stuff. We're really fortunate to have Matty Logue, um, yep. my friend, obviously the, the lead writer for News Corp now, um, yep. who's like me, is a Celtics tragic. Um, it's a big tick for him. But he's done a phenomenal job. Phenomenal. And that's how it's going to build because it is very difficult. I mean, he, he's got enormous challenges because he, he's up against it. Like, that, even though we've got this deal now digitally with News Corp and with, you know, it's a great TV deal. First, TV deal has paid money in like forever since yep. the, you know, I mean, we didn't have a TV deal that paid us money before. So that's been huge as well. So look, it's 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 going to be tough. There's no doubt, Woody. I mean, it, it like the, the those days are long gone, but I mean, we had Michael Bleski is, is just the greatest advocate yep. for basketball ever and the perfect man. I mean, Larry, basically, and I've told Larry this, Larry Kesterman is the NBL version of Michael Bleski. There's no doubt about it. He is Mike, yeah. what Mike Robleski was. Good comp. And yeah. and that's and that's the thing. And we, you know, I think Paul's got his heart in the right place. And I think, you know, he he he's beginning to understand what's really required because that is going to be the next step. As I mentioned, converting the casuals into members. That's what yeah. it's all about. It's what Perth, um, you know, and and Jack Bendat, God rest his soul, did did so well, and and the guys even before him. Uh, and turn that into, you know, what used to be, Robert, the greatest home court environment. I'm not sure if it is anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Not when you lose six of your last eight. Thank you very much yep. at RSC Arena. But I, I, I said I wasn't going to be harsh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, but that's yeah, what the Army does spectacularly well. You know, yeah. is that community connection and that, that I mean, it, it, it's funny. I think it was Lockie Reed that said to me once that he reckons that 70% of the Red Army haven't even played basketball. It's all they, they don't and, and probably don't know that much about it. It's more about you know the Western Australians versus the world. Yeah, yeah and this is our place, etc. And I'd love to see the Kings get that kind of you know Kings against the world because let's face it, Woody, the Kings were villains this year. Yeah, I mean oh, if it wasn't hundred percent. Yeah, you look at what Paul was carrying on with in Twitter from the start. You know, the scumbags and idiots comments. You look at the whole business about you know that that tweet about Cinderella screw Cinderella oh man hashtag scoreboard uh, and all that stuff yeah right well, like they wore the black hats they don't oh. care and maybe that's the maybe that might be the secret is, yep. is just to say embrace it embrace and it, yeah. yeah especially now they're champions and, and everyone likes to knock the kings off so maybe that's how you attract people and say it's, hey yeah, you know, yeah join it join us Expect more for, more of that from Paul Smith, you know, approaching the next season, right? So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Nice. Very good. We thought we might just finish off this uh, part, Matt, just with something. We, Woody and I are very big on lists, right? You know, top five, top ten. Oh, so am I. Sort of oh, yeah. Oh, my so God. You love this bit. So I wanted, wanted to see who you would select as your all-time Sydney Kings starting five. And I know that's going to be a hard one just to select five. But well, yeah, go for it. The, the interesting thing is I was the chairman of selectors for the Sydney Kings 25th anniversary yeah. team. Yep. So it, it, it's it's kind of fascinating because there's all manner of criteria you can use. Like, mm. who's the most talented? Who's the who? Who's got longevity? Who scored the most? Who rebounded or whatever? Who was a great defender, role player? And the my five has always been locked in mm. until this year. Ooh, we got to change. I'm right? not I'm not big on recency. In fact, I freaking hate recency bias. I hate it. But. Jalen Adams is the best point guard in the history of the Sydney Kings, right? That's a big statement. Steve Carfino, Shane Hill, CJ Britton. That's kind of your, your trilogy. Yeah. That's kind of the three. Shane or CJ is always going to be in one of those fives. And Shane Hill was obviously in, in the 25th anniversary five. But what Jalen Adams did... I've, lo I've, I've watched this kid since his days at St. Bonaventure. I've been a massive fan. Yep. When Chris Pongrass signed him, I said, "That's." I said, mate, this guy's going to win the MVP. He's just that good. He's, he's a superstar because he does everything. He's a two-way player. He's a scorer. He's at a rebounder for his size. I mean, the guy's barely six, my height, 6'1". Barely 6'1". Um, 
and a tremendous facilitator. Um, and then obviously pulled off that dunk over Brisbane when I lost my biscuits in Thailand. Which we had. Went, we had. I know. Everybody <laughs> went viral around the world. Can you believe that? Yeah. I told Pongrass I was channeling my inner Gus, Gus Johnson on yeah, the one. Yeah, so yeah. I was. So, it, and it, look, he's only played 24 games. He's, he's the best point guard the Kings have ever had. I, 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 I put him above. And this is a hard thing for me to say. Shane Hill's a Sydney Kings legend. So is CJ Bruton. So is Steve Carfino. Three Sydney Kings legends. And yet this guy's better than all three of them. So he has to go into my five, even though it's one year. But that's fine because th there's another guy in my five that's also a one year. Which We know who he is and, and rest, know, in, rest in peace to him rest too. In, yeah. So yeah. the five, so to be honest with you, the five is, is going to be the same as what it is what it has been since the 25th anniversary, which is um, Jalen Adams at the point, well, except for Jalen Adams. So the other the other four, Jason Smith, greatest leader I've ever seen. Dwayne McLean, still the most talented player I've ever seen and the most charismatic and the most cool. um, magnetic. And That's yeah, I'm, 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 he had this unbelievable... Anybody who was, who was there in, in 92 in Sydney, this guy, and people don't believe me and that's fine. I was there, I, I was right in the middle of it, believe me. This was Michael Jordan in Sydney. Oh, yeah. that, he's, he was in a McDonald's commercial, for God's sake. He, when's the last time, a, you know, a national McDonald's commercial, a national Coke commercial. Mm -hmm. He had his own shoe designed by Reebok. <laughs> Reebok, are you serious? That's never happened and never, it never will happen again. His own shoe by a global behemoth. Um, and so much, you know, had his own, he had massive billboards at Central Station. I'll oh, just go on and on and on. So he's the three. Chris Williams, you mentioned. Greatest single season import in NBL history, not even close. Yeah. And then the greatest king of them all is, is at the five, and that's Matthew Nelson. You know, owns about 14 or 15 franchise yeah. records still to this day. Um, so and it feels he's, like he gets slept on a bit, Nielsen, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, it's he ridiculous. Does. Captain he his country, yeah. two-time Olympian, yeah. Yeah. one of the all-time greats. And by the way, probably the next head coach of the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. Don't, oh. don't kid yourself. Like, he, he, they love him. Yeah. They love him. And Pop adores him. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, he's... And, and what he did for the Kings is extraordinary. And, and what I love about his story is... Sydney boy, Penrith boy, yep. came up through the Sydney Sky program, the Sydney Kings Youth program, as it was back in the day. And then he was a development player in 90, and uh, well, played two games in 95, then started in 97. And then just, but his first few years, he was kind of this wild, out of control kid that was incredibly talented and athletic, but really didn't understand how to play. But um, under Brett Brown, he really got to another level. And then Gorge, just those two years, forget about it. So let's just cemented those before, we, before we move on, Matt. So we've got uh, Jalen Adams. Uh, who was your two again? Jason, Jason Smith. Smith. Yep. Dwayne, Dwayne McLean, McLean, who you could argue was a two, but I mean yep. you could put him in the two three. Yep. And then uh, Chris Williams and Matt Nelson. Matt Nelson. No, that's a great five. I don't think you've got any arguments with those names, right, Woody? Nah, no arguments at all. You know, I'm I'm very partial towards. Mario Donaldson, my guy, but you can't put him in there ahead of uh, Jason Smith or anything like that, man. And Leon Trimingham deserves a little bit of a mention. Isaac oh, Burton, yeah. you know, there's, there were some great kings. Mark Dalton, there's a, Dean Utah, a lot of guys you could mention here, man, right? But I think that's a pretty uh, apt selection, uh, Matt, so yeah. Now, Matt, did you yeah. consider Michael Kingma for the list? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he was, he was six man. What about Ch Chucky Buckets, Charles Camouche? Charles, oh, <laughs> Charles Camouche. Oh, my God. Charles Camouche. Yeah. Anyway. Nice. No, that was great fun. I really appreciate sort of those answers. It was great sort of hearing about some of the history and obviously hearing your, your list there. But we might move on to some NBA now, boys. What do you reckon? Um, I'm happy about that. Today, I'm happy. I wasn't happy the other day. I'm happy today. Great point, man. I should say at the time of recording, Friday the 20th of May. So the Celtics have just come off a, a huge win today. Got to say, the playoffs, we haven't had a lot of close games so far. We had a few in, the obviously, the Boston-Milwaukee series. But yeah, it was a great series. a lot of blowouts, you know? Like, and it's, yeah. It's strange, isn't it, when you get to sort of this sort of stage. But, um, yeah, just wanted to sort of see, I guess, what your thoughts have been on the conference finals so far. Uh, Woody, we might start with you. What are, you, what are your thoughts? I mean, obviously, saying that, you know, the Dallas Golden State's only one game in, but yeah. Yeah, what, are your, what are your thoughts, man? Well, it's good the NBL's completed now, and we can turn our attention com completely towards the NBA. Um, and to be fair, like, 
I just think that we're going to talk a little bit about the Phoenix Suns here and CP3's legacy, right? And, <laughs> and, and what's going on there, right? I mean, Lucas you're not and gonna Matt. Go, hey, sorry, Woody, you're not going to go with Patrick Beverly on a side. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I don't mean Patrick Beverly. I mean, like, he does, have a, he does have a great career in the media after things, but, I mean, putting Paul George on blast and things like that, I mean, take it as he... But to, to be fair, I could go and mention all the, all the different times that CP3 has failed to deliver when it counted most, right? Especially in the, in the postseason when, uh, you know, he's got a whole regular season behind him. His body just doesn't hold up, right? And yeah. something always seems to go wrong. And as, as he is the point god. I know I'm not going to argue with him. He's a Hall of Famer, no doubt about it, like, like Pat Beverly said. But at the same point, man, you, you know, you're... You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta close out this series, man. It's a great opportunity here for them to to beat. They're a good matchup for Golden State if they'd won that series, and to go to the finals against either your your Celtics or the Heat. It's a great. Op- this this is it, man. That's it. It's done. He's never winning a championship now. Am I wrong no. in saying that? No. 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 Yeah. You're not. Yeah. He's not. Not winning unless one. he goes ring chasing in the last. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. So, I mean, um, look. Yeah. It's. I think what we're seeing it's it's levels of superstar, right? Yeah. There's superstars and there's superstars, and he's at this level. He's not at that level. I mean, it's as simple as that. If yeah. you can't get it done when you've got all the opportunity in the world, I mean, they should have won. Look, Giannis was ridiculous. But they, you know, the way they were playing last year, it's, and you're supposed to be the guy to take us to a championship level. And he's never proven that he is that guy. Yeah. Doesn't mean he's not a Hall of Famer. I agree. Plenty of the Hall of Famers haven't won a championship, obviously. You know, so that, that's just the way it is. But that's what I'm saying. There's, there's superstars that you know, there's levels. You know, and, and he's on a probably a mid, mid-tier mid superstar level. A guy that's, you know, talented enough um, to be a Hall of Famer, puts up unbelievable numbers, great leader, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, can you lead us to a championship? And if the answer is no, then you're not up a tier for mine. You're kind of at the middle tier. Ah, oh, well said. It's a good call. Almost sort of feels a little bit John Stockton-ish to me. When yeah, I hear that sort of a little thing. bit. He wasn't able to, I mean, obviously he had Jordan in front of him. He did have a super well, yeah, team. Was him, but he was never able to sort of get over that next level. But no, a good call. I think he sort of made some good points there, there Woods. And it's funny, the, the media, I guess that narrative can shift very quickly, can't yeah. they? Because, you know, after the first series, everyone's just talking him up sort of thing. I'm obviously, you know, like you, Woods, a massive Trey Young fan. And I saw what happened with him this year. Just all yeah. the love being thrown at him. Granted, you know, he was amazing in those two playing games. Had a, a crappy series against Miami. No one's denying that. But then everyone's just totally changed the narrative there. And, oh, he's overrated. He's never going to win. <laughs> Hang on a minute. A month before, you guys are saying how amazing this season was and everything. So, I guess, yeah, that's it, it sort of, it does sort of happen like that. But, no, good call. Um, Matt, I might ask you the next one. Um, tell us why your Celtics are going all the way this season. Marcus Smart. That's I why. love it, love That's it, why. love it. Yeah. My guy, he was magnificent. I mean, what can you? He was just unbelievable. And yep. you know, it it uh, it blows my mind. And I put this on Twitter actually that there were there were people, a lot of people, that wanted him traded. Mm. What? Yeah. You know, I mean, he's been. I mean, look, I saw him in Oklahoma State. I thought he was awesome. I loved it when he got picked sixth. And I thought, wow, that's a great pickup. And he's had these team friendly contracts all the way along. This guy. He's gone to another level this year, there's no doubt. I mean, Defensive Player of the Year, which he thoroughly deserved and probably he deserved last year as well. But um, he's, um, you know, he's now the full-time point, which is what he's been asking for. Yep. Uh, and I think they played him out of position for years. And now that he's, I'm the leader of this team, they're just going to go to a whole new level. And you saw it today. I mean, that was just domination yep. from start. Not from start to finish. I mean, they're down 10 in the first quarter. I thought, oh, no, here we go. Um, and I'm, you know, uh, Matt Logan and I was sort of going back and forth, and but um, by the halftime, the game was over. There was not going to be a comeback. And he, he, in the third quarter, when they did make that run, it was him that settled down. I'm going to make a play defensively, offensively, whatever it is. Um, that's he's going to be the reason. Look, I mean, that and obviously Jason Tatum. You know, you talk about superstar tears. He's here doing that. Yeah. That kid is unbelievable. He's got all the tools, doesn't he? Oh, Absolutely. He's, he's basically, I mean, I don't mean to sound sacrilegious, but I think it probably has a lot to do with the fact that he worked with this guy. You can see a lot of Kobe in him. Yeah. You, you know, there's a lot of Kobe in him. Um, and obviously, you know, he's two, three inches taller than what Kobe was, but mm-hmm. he obviously spent a lot of time with Kobe before he passed and, and um, became close with him. And I think he's taken a lot of that kind of, you know, the 
mamba mentality, if you want to call it. Mm. You can just see he's he's he gets it at both ends, not just offensively, but defensively, where Kobe was great as well. And and he's become a genuine two way player and a guy that you can kind of count on. You know that that forty six points against Giannis was mind blowing in Game Six. Mind blowing. It's one of the greatest performances. I've ever seen from a oh, That was Which ridiculous. Talking was to ridiculous. the ultimate Larry Bird fan, yeah. I, I don't, what he did was insane yeah. on the road. I mean, give me against Giannis, please. Can either of you see, see Miami or Dallas making the. I'm not saying a freaking word. Okay, so because, don't, want to, don't want to jinx it yet. You know why? Because game one, 62 54, Matt. Matt Logue's, oh, well, yeah. Matt Logue's sending me messages. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and I said, can you just calm down? Please calm down. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, and of course, what happens? 39-14. Yeah. So I'm not saying anything. I will say that I'm I'm very confident that they're going to have a chance to get to the finals. Yeah. yeah. I'm very com- I'm confident. I'm not arrogant. I'm not overconfident. I'm confident they're going to, they're going to, look, it's going to be tough. Miami... Jimmy Butler's gonna he's gonna have a response for them. I've got no doubt about it. Yeah. Same with that. I, I think Bam out of buy, I'm just I'm waiting on him because he's he's hurt us. He hurt the self. I think we lost Matt there for a minute. It's interesting the point he was making though, Woods, about the Bam out of bio thing. I heard um Brian Scalabrini on the recent low post and he was saying that Robert Williams played against um Adebayo growing up and basically just dominated him. I don't know whether you heard that sort of dominated him. So apparently he's got all the confidence in the world, um, you know, going up against Adebayo. So I thought that was quite interesting hearing that there. So, yeah. yeah. And ha- having Robert Williams is, is, is one thing. You know, I like the Time Lord so much, Robbie, yeah, right? Yeah. So having yeah. uh, having him there and fit and Al Horford back today as well, um, I said it would be a Golden State Celtics uh, final series. So I, I don't see that changing. For Matt to come back, Woods, do you think Kyle Lowry, if he's able to come back, do you think he makes any difference there at all? Kyle, Kyle Lowry? Or? Yeah, I mean, he's a veteran Kyle Lowry there, so uh, welcome back, Matt. Um, but yeah, have, sorry, have, about that. having Kyle Lowry, um, you know, even on the bench there is, 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 is a great locker room presence. I mean, what's his fitness situation like? Is he going to be back uh, this series? Seems like it's a bit sort of touch and go, isn't it? I haven't heard sort of yeah. either way. But... A shout out to Gabe Vincent and these guys, undrafted guys that have stepped up yeah, and, and, and well. played really well in his yeah. absence. And, um, you know, having a mentor like Lowry. Um, and I mean, the, the Heat had a lot of injury issues throughout throughout the, the season. And I told you, man, you know, these guys have stepped up and played uh, when, when guys have been out, you know, and, and it, it set them up for an opportunity in, in the big time in the playoffs to play it because, you know, they, they've been in these situations in the regular season when, when Miami was battling injuries. So a guy like Gabe Vincent's ready to step up, you know, in the absence of, of, of Kyle Lowry. So, yeah. Hey, Matt, before we go on to some quick hits with the NBL and NBL 1, that Tyler Hero block or non-block today, what did you think? Because <laughs> they were going on about that in the commentary, weren't they? I know. Of course, it was a non-block. What am I going to say? I'm not going to say anything different. So just, just quickly, what do too? The other, the other thing. You, I don't know if you guys talked about. Sorry, I was uh, the connection fell out. No, no. But um, the the one thing it gives me pause about Miami is Eric Spolstra because oh, I think yeah. he's an incredible coach. I mean, he's Absolutely. he to me he might be the best coach in the league. I mean, oh, I think yeah. I think it made Udoka. Purely selfishly, he's done an amazing well, job. But Spolster absolutely. for the last few years, yeah. he's just gone. Um, he's just a genius. This kid, unbelievable. He's a young guy, but oh, mm. and you, okay. you know, and that's when you get guy, undrafted guys like Max Strews and Gabe Vincent to play like that. Mm. That's coaching, man. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Shades of Pat imagine, Riley. You can imagine Spolster now saying, "Oh, the no one believes in us. You know, we lost this home game. Oh. We're going to Boston, so he'll yeah. be doing all that sort of." Thing. <laughs> That's why I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm confident. I think if if we take care of business at home, we win the series, no problem. Yeah. But um, I just you, you can't write Miami off, not with a no. coach like that, and not no. with Butler with something to prove. Even if he has to self motivate, like this business about in the press conference, oh, they they wanted to embarrass us. I mean, that was crap. They just wanted to beat them. They didn't want to embarrass you. But he needs to, sometimes Jimmy needs to make this stuff up to get himself jacked. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So he's going to, like, he's going to take that. That's going to be a big chip on his shoulder. He's going to take that and run with it. No doubt about it. And and they're all playing for the godfather of Miami basketball, Udonis Haslam, man. You know this guy? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, don't forget about him, man. He he's got a huge influence on this team as well. So you you can't yeah, write off true. Miami right away, right? No, yeah. no way. I'm yeah. not going to. Yeah. 
All right, fellas, what we might do, we might sort of just do a few sort of quick hits, I guess, just a little bit on the NBL, just a few sort of off-season moves there, and then we'll just do a little bit on NBL 1. So sure. I guess just with the NBL there, um, Woods, I sort of wanted to sort of maybe see what your thoughts were on these signings this week. Obviously know that um, you know, you've got a big uh, love for the Cairns, Taipans, and, and your boy Keanu Pinder. Uh, yep. What were your thoughts on those two, um, you know, bringing him and, and, and Bull Cole back there? Really happy for a small market team that's able to retain this kind of talent. And, you know, Keanu, I'm a huge fan of his and been supporting him since day one. And, um, you know, like for him, the way he's grown under Coach Ford has just been amazing. You know, that relationship they have going back um, to his younger days and whatnot. And for him to stay in that environment and just build over the next few years, if he went to a different uh, situation under a different coach, his game wouldn't develop as I think it should, right? And so for him to stay there and, um, and find a home and, uh, and Bull Cole, man, like, you know, like, he just came out of nowhere, man. And, and I, I think that um, if, if, that, if they can retain Taj McCall and, and, uh, and maybe get a couple of uh, good imports to surround these guys next year, like, you know, a few years ago we saw with, with Newbill and, and uh, Oliver and, and uh, a fit Scotty Machado. I'm still a fan of Scotty Machado, man. If, if he can yeah, get he's fit, you know. If he, him, Woods, he won't be back. I know, man, but it's just sad yeah. because, like, True. you know, it's, it seems like he just can't stay healthy, right? But get a nice, get a nice uh, point guard, a floor general, a leader um, to go alongside Taj. Um, yeah. Maybe get rid of Zimmerman and, and bring in a, a, mm. a, a, you know, athletic 4-5 man. And, uh, yeah. you know, they could make some noise next year, man. I'm telling you, right? So, yeah. yeah that's very cool. Um, the other one we saw the signing this week, obviously New Zealand signing Dan Foto on a two-year deal there. We know he's the younger brother of the tall black star Isaac there. Um, just wanted to, I just sort of read a good sort of thing on him. They've got a family tradition there where, where possible, they try and wear number 42 because it sounds like faux two. And I just thought that was great when I heard that. So <laughs> anytime they try and grab that 42 jersey. Yeah. Year, so, yeah, just thought I'd sort of bring that one up. Um, and probably just lastly on the NBL stuff there, we've seen that obviously Hugo Besson, I'm not going to do the French accent, I apologise. Um, and Osman Dieng have both been invited to these draft combines. Look like they've started pretty well. Um, mm. Obviously, Dyson Daniels is looking good there. What do you boys think in terms of the draft? Obviously, and we'll include Luke Travers there. So we'll say um, uh, Basson, Deng, Travers, and Daniels. Um, where do you sort of think those guys will get drafted there, and, and if they will at all? Um, so obviously, the drafts on June twenty three in Brooklyn. Um, what are you boys' thoughts on on those four names? Matt, three of the four will get drafted. Yeah. Deng will go top. 15 at the least, at the very least. I mean, you, if you'll have a, he's shooting up mock draft boards big time. Yeah. Because the thing about him is he's got those tools, right? That, that NBA teams covered 610 ball handler can shoot the three yeah. great athlete, all of the above. Um, yeah, needs to be more aggressive. And I think we saw that in the second half of the NBL season yeah. when Shamir basically gave him the keys and said, you need to be showcased. So go out and do what you do. Uh, and he was outstanding and, and is a guy that um, you could easily see um, someone like Sam Presti picking up for yep. Oklahoma City. Yep. That's, a, that's a distinct possibility. Oh, I think he goes I think he goes top 15. Dyson Daniels is a lock for top 15. The only question mark with him is how high he goes up. Yep. I mean, he's grown. Apparently, he's up to 6'8 now. Wow. I mean, he, he was measured at 6'8, in the, yeah. uh, apparently, the last time they measured him, which is frightening. You know, 6'8 guy... Bit of a funky jump shot, but that can be fixed. But has all the tools, all the tools, you know. And pl- you know, and he's got unbelievable athleticism as well. Um, Basson is a guy. I don't know if you saw that vision of him knocking down three after three after three. Yeah, I saw it at the yeah. combine. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god. And he's, you know, he's a guy. He's a second rounder. I think he's probably a mid to high second rounder if I had to guess. Someone Travis, like Spurs will draft him, I reckon. They like the yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I yeah. talk about this. That, that would be a perfect fit for them. Um, hey, Matt, this last name, you're not going to hate on the Red Army, though, are you? When we're talking about Luke Travers. I love the guy, and, and anybody who heard, has heard me talk about him is always... Uh, I, I love the size. I love, I love his attitude. I love... He can do a lot of things. He can fill up a, a stat sheet. He's big. He's athletic. Um, he still can't shoot. He yeah, still he can't, can't shoot, and that's the problem. And until that gets fixed, which it can, it can. You know, there's there's been guys that couldn't shoot to save their life that had great NBA careers because they, you know, they learned to be. <laughs> he can't be a 25 percent shooter from three and be in the NBA because yeah. he's going to be a role player. He's going to be a three and D guy. That's that's where he's going to be fit. That's his fit. 
Yeah. Um, he's going to need to be able to get up in the 35, 40 range if he's going to stick. Doesn't mean he won't get picked up on NBA team, mind you. I could easily see him get picked up as a free agent rookie, yeah. you know, and stick with someone. Because with him and with so many of these kids, it's fit, role, situation. Mm-hmm. And if they, if they tick all three boxes, they're locked in. But it is a tough, tough thing to do. It really is. It really is because it's, it's it, you know, when we see, well, people talk about um, Jalen Adams. Why isn't Jalen Adams in the NBA? Um, Liam San Marino described it beautifully because Jalen Adams is an absolute stud. Jalen yeah. Adams needs to be a starter. He doesn't, yeah. he's not a guy that, and this is what Liam described, and he's spot on. He's not a guy that necessarily can fill a role, as brilliant as he is. He's a guy that needs to be the guy. That's the thing. So it's a lot more difficult for him than, say, a Kiefer Sykes, who is a far better player than Kiefer Sykes. And Kiefer Sykes got, you know, he started yeah. for Indiana, right? Think, how can Kiefer Sykes be playing? Jack? But that's how it works. It, it, again, fit, role, situation. Yeah. That's what it's all about. So Luke, I think I would be surprised. He could. Somebody could take a, a flyer on him in the late, say, 50s, which is obviously the last now eight draft picks because of the two that got full footed yep. not 60 this year um i'd love to see it um but i'd also love to see him back with perth for another year and kind of keep that development going absolutely well certainly going to be an interesting uh, draft to follow isn't it so sort of just over a month away there so you need to ask me about kai soto oh, go on, go on. <laughs> what do you reckon i can't well joel bell's his agent and for him to go on the draft i think is absolutely ludicrous I know, man. I, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And I mean, but it doesn't matter what I say. I mean, have a look at YouTube, those content creators. Oh, my Lord. He's better than Chet Holmgren. He's better than Jabari Smith. He's better than Paolo Bencaro. I mean, give me a break. Oh, crazy. Story. Anyway, <laughs> lovely kid. Lovely kid. Yeah. And it was never, and it's never been personal, but, um, you know, the, this whole thing with me and the. YouTube maniacs in, in the Philippines has um, been quite hilarious all season. Pretty passionate over there, aren't they? I mean, spending one more year in the NBL, you know, and then really developing his body and, and, and you know, exactly. learning a little bit more from the likes of whoever else, if Cam is still on that team, just learning under the tutelage of a, of a, of a, of a veteran would be good for him. Yeah. Uh, just quickly before we move on, I think Luke Travis, Robbie, can, he's got that Andre Kerlenko type of game for sure, right? You know what I mean? Like, a little bit, you know, the, the, the AK-47 comparisons. Not like, uh, defender, no, not, not quite, but I mean, he's got that sort of like prototype and a guy like um, um, Hugo Besson is like he's, like he's a... Uh, French, um, you know, country. Evan, 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 Evan Fournier, right? Evan Fournier, exactly. That's who he is. Yeah, That's right. Who he is. Like straight up, like yeah. so. I mean, these guys have got like the ability to translate. I mean, Travis, he's got to work on his shot, as Matt said, and I agree. Um, somewhere between ten and twenty for both those guys, um, uh, Jiang and uh, and uh, our, the local boy Daniels as well. Daniels. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Good stuff, boys. Yeah. All right, well, uh, Woody, I thought before we get on to your favourite segment and rip open an old pack of cards, um, remember I said we are going to touch, touch on a little bit of um, NBL. For sure, man. Uh, we love week. we so love our NBL one. Yeah. I wanted to tell a quick little story before I go into it. So as you know, um, well, as the viewers know as well, so I'm sort of commentating the Hills Hornets games this year. So when the first round of games started in NBL 1, um, Hills had an away game. So I thought, oh, I'm going to sort of tune into a few of these games on the NBL 1 website and sort of see what <laughs> the competition's going to be like and everything. So um, what, uh, the first game I put on, I'm not going to mention who the team was, but I've got to say, the commentary was really bad. And I'm sitting there going, I, I'm going to... I know who it was. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was. It was pretty bad. And I thought, how good is this sort of thing? Just, just quickly, just quickly, before you go on, I actually met that commentator. Oh, did you? Decent yeah, at a, U, at a UBL at a UBL game, oh, wow. and we had a bit of a discussion. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't nasty. I wasn't interesting. Nasty. Yeah, no, I know anyway. we mentioned him offline, but well, the, the next game I happened to tune into. What do you probably remember this? So the Hills Hornets are playing the Inner West Bulls there. Yep. So, <laughs> on, I thought I'll see what this sort of commentary is like. Of course, Matt's the the commentator for Inner West, so he starts off with the commentary. I'm like, oh my god, you know, I was just thinking I've got this thing covered. How can I doing this? And now I'm, I'm up against oh, Matt. Please. What I'd like oh, to say please. to the viewers though, <laughs> I reached out to Matt the next week, and he was really gracious with his time, sort of giving me a few tips there and everything like that. And you know, it was quite a nervous thing for me. Obviously, you know, doing a podcast one thing is one thing, doing commentary is another thing. Yeah. So you know, I've done about oh, maybe 14 games now under my belt, and feel like I'm getting sort of stronger every week. And you yeah, mm. really appreciate sort of Matt giving me some, you know, some little tips and some 
sort of advice there and everything. And same with uh, Liam Santamaria. Yeah. I sort of had a chat with him and, and got some good tips. So, yeah, that was my little backstory there. So thank you, Matt. Um, my pleasure. But, um, anytime. No, anytime. No, it's, it's good. I mean, it, it's... Um, yeah, you got to pay it forward, man. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to help whoever. You know, I mean, it's they think I've got something to, to help with, and absolutely. And you couldn't find a better uh, advisor as such as than Mr. Sam Maria. I mean, no, he's great. the guy's a complete total. I'm really getting into it. You know, I got up this morning, had the day off, so I put on the NBL One show. You know, the one that um, they do sort of on YouTube each week, watching that. You know, really sort of getting into it and that. So it's good. What I thought I'd maybe cover. I'm sort of trying to just go through maybe one conference, sort of just quickly each week there. So what I thought I might talk about this week is the NBL One West, um, which is obviously my my home state in WA there. So. How's this for some names, Woody? You're probably not as familiar as Matt and I are some of the names that are running about in this NBL One West. So very quickly, these these are some of the names that are featuring. Michael Vigor, Damian Scott, Ollie Hayes-Brown, Ben Purser, Andrew Ferguson, Kyle Armour, Woody's boy, and Matt's boy, I think, probably, uh, Ray Turner. Ah, um, oh, yes. Son of Ricky Grace, uh, Jeremy Grace, uh, Joel Wagner, Lewis Timms. Um, so Grace, Wagner, and Timms all play for the Perth Redbacks. So I wanted to give a shout-out to our... Our boy and friend of the podcast, Andrew Canyon. AC, AC. He's also doing some commentary there for the for the Perth Redbacks. Um, anyway, the names continue. Gavin Field, Mathiang Muong, Marshall Nelson, Greg Heyer, Devondrick Walker, Kyle oh, Zerich, wow. and Cody Ellis. So they were just yeah. some of Cody, the ones. Cody. Yeah, my some, guy. Yeah, some of the names that featured in NBL 1 West last week. So look, at six rounds in. Um, the stand-up team so far. Look, Geraldton, who are 7-0, and oh, just killing it there. Um, obviously, June Delup are looking good as well with a 5-1 and one record there. So that was kind of a little bit on the NBL 1 West. So we'll sort of try and talk about one of the, the conferences um, each week. In terms of the NBL 1 East that I cover, and obviously Matt does as well, so the game I did last week was the men's game between the Hills Hornets and Bankstown. Um, it wasn't a good one for my hometown Hornets there, so Bankstown picking up their first win. No, you season. guys have been, yeah, you've been struggling. They have been, yeah, they're very up and down. They, you know, they beat Illawarra, who's, you know, loaded with stars, and obviously, you know, That made Gardner. no sense at all. Kiwi Gardner. Yeah. Yeah. He, is he a chance to make the NBL? Like, honestly, Kiwi Gardner. Well, it's a little level below, maybe. That's, then that's the thing. I mean, 5'7". Yeah. Uh, yeah. He reminds me so much of Bobby Locke, you know, for yeah. those of you. I mean, yeah. I'm yeah. going back in the day, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, famously scored 50 points after stepping off the plane, his first NBL game. He was yeah. amazing, Bobby. Incredible, yeah. ex explosive offensive force. He reminds me so much of him, you know. Yeah. Um, could he make the NBL... As a third import, maybe. Yep. You, you Possibly. Could maybe see him on a team like Cairns you could or see it. something like that. He's a gem. He, I, he's so I, I, good, isn't the, he? He's too good for he's too good for NBL one. Put it that way. Yeah, and also Brandon Jenkins as well, the, the guy yeah. that plays the import for Albury. There, he's a he's a killer. That yeah, guy he's there. a beast. So he scored thirty seven last week against Canberra. Um, the other standout in the NBL one East was Miles Cherry um, for the Newcastle yeah, Falcons. Yeah, Newcastle Falcons in, in a big upset win over Sutherland there. So, um, and obviously, sort of for the women there, we don't sort of forget about them. It's been I'm actually looking forward to <laughs> the next Hills game. Lauren Nicholson for Sutherland. Um, She's terrific. Wow, so love 20, Lauren. Twenty seven in the first game, then she got forty and nine assists in Sutherland. Oh yeah, the, she's the win over she's Central a beast. Coast. She's yeah, amazing, so, that girl. I wanted to ask you about the, the role you're doing there, Matt, for, for the Inner West Bulls there. They're a little <laughs> bit up and down, aren't they? The girls haven't won a game, but the men... The girls have been, been yeah. The girls yeah. have got... The, the men, I mean, the men, are, they had a win against uh, a Norths team that featured... <laughs> talk about... Your, Kings, yep. Wow. I mean, Anatoly Bose, former NBL Rookie of the Year. And Patrick the Sanders, the Colonel. The Colonel, yeah. man. What the a Colonel. legend. At 38 years old, they wheeled him out, right, to play NBL yeah. 1. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, he's... You know, he's like me. He's put on the kilos, but he still can play. He can yeah. play. Yeah, and nice. then um, he, the newly minted NBL champion, Ignatius Mitchell, who was terrific yep. Yep. Um, for them. But, um, yeah, the, 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 the girls are really struggling because they just don't have any – number one, they don't have any height. Number two, they don't have any depth. Number three, they uh, they don't have much talent, really. They've got a, they got a cup – Georgia Sturt, who played a couple of years in Gonzaga, yep. who, interestingly enough, is GWS Giants' Toby Green's girlfriend. Oh, well, I know that. So, what do you want I ran into him the other day. Oh, there's right? Toby Green. Hello, Toby. I was like, oh. Hey, Woody, that's an AFL team. So that's a sport they also play in Australia. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no idea. Okay. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be all NRL, Woody, but I'm now completely AFL. So, yeah, I hate the NRL now. For a guy from Wollongong, yeah? AFL guy, Sydney. right? No, 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 Sydney. Sydney. Oh, yeah. Wollongong University guy. Sorry, my Wollongong bad. Wollongong Uni guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, 
So yeah, um, the girls aren't so good. Unfortunately, it's it's a bit Tell of a me about the maker connection for Inner West as well. There's a maker on the team, isn't there? Um, yeah, it's um, Thorn Maker's cousin, Sure Maker. Cousin, how's he looking? Yeah, another one, really yeah. good. I mean, he's yeah. he's big time, six eight, mm. strong, can shoot the three, rebounds. Um, I really like him. He's going to be a, he's a fringe old player. That one, you know. Yep. I mean, he's he. I could see him play in Bill on some roster. And it's interesting. Not this week, but the previous week they played Sutherland. Uh, and um, Jewett, when they were playing in the semi-finals, Jewett, Reith, and, and both Makura and Matur were at the game. Oh, well. So it was like, oh, hello. But, um, yeah, so uh, they, they, they're good. I, young guy coaching, Daniel Kim, who's been involved with the Illawarra Hawks and Sydney Kings. Great guy, great mind. Um, he's going to be a terrific head coach, I think, down the yeah. track, Daniel. And, a um, lot of lot of talent, you know. The, the seven footer with a name that no one else can oh, pronounce. That was on my list. Tell me again, because you told me on the phone. Senegorets. Okay. Right. Senegor, not Krinagorak. Yeah. Senegorets. There's been some weird variations. Oh, I smashed. I did when I started calling, which I, I think we, you wanted to get to. When I started calling their games two years ago, my first game, I had no idea, and I obliterated, obliterated. I must have had five different pronunciations. But yeah, sort of good. It's I've got it now, so it's there you go. I'll probably check in you before we actually play in a West. Yeah, good idea. No, I appreciate that. So look, you're happy to sort of be doing this NBL one stuff. I think it's something we're happy to sort of promote there. Obviously, the NBL is finished now, and people get out there and support your local NBL one team, and pretty much we'll have a local team because they're all around Australia there. So yeah, no. So go on. Sorry, go, Woody. Robbie, so I was just going to say my work colleague, shout out to Rusty. Um, he's a big part of the Filipino community here in the hills and, and loves his basketball and traveling with him for the last couple of days. And he says, man, one of my really good friends is Marvin Fidel, right? Ah, nice. Plays for the, for, the, for the Hornets. So I just thought I'd shout out, shout out to him. And I've been giving him heaps of stick about uh, uh, Kai Soto as well, Matt. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Marvin Fidel as well. He's I love really it. He's a good guy. I got to know him a bit. Really good guy and a great yeah. defender, as I'm sure Matt would agree. He's, a, he's all... Oh, great. yeah. He's, he's and he's... Man, isn't he? Yeah, and he's been a Waratah store for years, yep. Marvin. Yep. I mean, he's yeah, I've, I've watched him play for a long time. Mm. Yeah, back when it was called Waratah. So, yep. yeah, Absolutely. great play. All right, good stuff. Well, appreciate that. The NBL one wrap there. So, all right, Woody, it's time. We like to say, Matt, that Woody carries on like a pork chop for this last segment we do. Oh, this the cards. Is, this is the card segment there. We'll finish off with this. And so, I might as well tell you I've got 15 random packs coming from various different eras and generations. Um, but Which I'm gonna, there's going to be some I have absolutely no idea about because, uh, yeah, for me, it, it, the, my NBA fandom begins and ends with Boston pretty much. Well, so I think the right. Celtics I'm player on, though. Come yeah, pull a Celtic. Yeah. Don't be, don't be greedy though, Rob. Like you oh. know, and show off like you always do every week. You know, no, like, you can go ahead and show off. Don't worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll try and give some good clues. All right. I like these upper deck cards. Very nice, nice set. These ones. All right, come on. This is one that, that, that Matt can get, okay? We've all watched Michael Jordan's Playground, right? We talk about that Detroit Pistons team being one of the toughest teams that Michael ever went against, right? And he speaks specifically about one man, all right, on that Detroit Pistons teams that he hated playing against, okay? And he, someone that we don't speak about often enough when we talk about the great players in NBA history. Detroit Pistons guard... I'm Joe talking Dumas. about oh, Joe Dumas. Darko oh, fan. Yeah. Joe Dumas, right? Nice, awesome. And it's all star card as well. Nice. Yep. Nice. 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 Great player, maybe not the best GM, but yeah, no, great player. <laughs> yeah, don't talk about the GM, exactly. No, no. Okay, we've got a special edition stay in school card with none other than who? The mayor of the Sacramento. Mayor of Sacramento. Yeah, exactly. M squared. Oh, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Cotton Fitzsimmons, yeah? Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. Hornacek in the background. I love those old school Phoenix units. They're, yeah. they're, they're some of the best units. I don't those have old one school of those Phoenix. The collection, the old one there. I used to love the, the Phoenix team in 84 that had Kyle Macy and James Edwards, Walter Davis, yeah. Larry Nance. That was a ha- almost, yeah, they took the Lakers uh, to six yeah. in okay. the conference finals. Great team. I got a Celtics card. Whoa, all right. Look at and, that. All right. I love this guy, right? Villanova legend. Right, I think Villanova. Hey, Pinkney. Hey, Pinkney. Hey, you said yeah. Villanova legend. There's only uh-huh. one, right? Yeah, like, dude. What? I could have said Dwayne because he was on the same team that won he the was. championship. He was, he was. But, he, but Dwayne played for Indiana, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got? Easy, easy Ed Pinkney. Matt yeah. three, Rob zero? Is that what we got? 
He's only open two, and I was shouting out Joe Dumas at the left. All right. I absolutely love this guy. He was a microwave. He could get it done. Uh, a, a guard um, with the 76ers, but then had a few really good years on those Sonics teams. Hersey okay. Hawkins. Hersey Hawkins. You know I'm a fan of him, Woody. I've got, he's got his, one of his jerseys in one of my wardrobes there, Hersey Hawkins. Yep. yep. He was a good player. Okay. I'm sure both of you know this one. Okay. Center. Uh, we, we had Andrew Gaze on our show, and he talked about his friendship with this guy, okay, um, when he was at the Spurs. This guy was uh, on those... David Robinson? No, this guy, is, this guy was uh, on those Bulls teams as a center, right? Oh, Will Perdue. Will Perdue. Will, what's he doing right. there? What is that? that? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's... Like, yeah, he is. in there too, right? Like, okay. Bailey looks like he's dropping the elbow on his head. He probably was. <laughs> this is a good one. Oh, I absolutely love this man, right? Um, love to smoke the weed. He's passed away recently. Oh, he was on an episode of Survivor. He was on an episode. He was on a season of Survivor. Who are we talking about? Uncle Cliffy. Uncle Cliff. 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 Yeah, Cliff Robinson. Robinson. We've let me just. Card a few times, haven't we? In different various packs. Let me just say, over the last five years. A lot of great sports stars gone too soon. Andrew Simons last week, Shane Warne, you had Kobe Bryant, been, Cliff amazing. Robinson. It's been really Ridiculous. sad to see, yeah, and it really sad. just a shout out to all these people who've gone, be, left us too soon, and it just makes you uh, appreciate life, you know, and 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 live every day to the max because yeah. Yeah. you hey, never know a, what's going to happen tomorrow. Pre headband, Cliff Robinson, there wasn't it? That's pre headband. Was was. Oh, yeah. Okay, come on, man. The first ever Dutch player to make it to the NBA. Duncan Rick Duffy. Smiths. Rick Smiths. Nice. All right. And I've, I've put you on the spot before, Rob. Um, maybe a last man. Who's, the, who's another Dutchman to have played in the NBA? Oh, man. Who's another Dutchman? Now oh, you got me. Robbie? Fra Francisco Elson. Francisco Elson. Yeah, Francisco oh. Elson. Yeah. Elson. I always forget he's a Dutch guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sound like it, it doesn't sound like a Dutch guy, yeah, yeah but you're right. Yeah. He is, I remember. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great college career at Purdue. This guy put up, got buckets for fun, man. He was a warrior. This is his son's card. Um, he's featured oh. on a documentary recently. Um, oh, man. Se seven footer. Yeah? What number? Center. Oh, you always... Oh, I don't... doesn't have the number on you. That's it, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about, like, like, like one. yeah, All Star Joe Barry Carroll. Oh wow! Oh, if you said Joe barely cares, yeah, then no, exactly. you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's sitting there on the bench as well, so he obviously didn't care about playing that game. But yeah, yep. he did have some talent, didn't he? Just didn't quite utilize it. Okay. Yeah, one of the great wasted talents in NBA history. Actually. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And and that's what you kind of like Andrew Bynum is the comparison you can make there. Big yeah, yeah, that's right. Who didn't really like like the game as yeah. that much, right? But he was just tall, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I don't... Indir indirectly, he got us Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale, so I can't yeah. be too bad. For it? sure, yeah. Okay, I've never ever heard of this guy. And to Andrew Canyon, who likes the uh, quintessential white guy cards that we pull out. The big white stiffs he likes. This guy is uh, Robbie. Maybe you know this guy, man. I don't know. He's a six foot two point guard. Average 11.2 points a game with the Spurs in 86-87. This is his Miami Heat card. Okay. Um, I'm talking about none other than John Sundervold. Oh, John Sundervold. Oh, three-point shooter. Yeah. yeah. He, was actually, he was actually in a three-point comp in the 90s. Had a real good stroke on him there. So, no, I wouldn't call him an unknown guy. John yeah. yeah. Okay. He was good back in the day. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. Cleveland Cavaliers. Forward, six foot seven, a bit part player. Went to North Carolina State. All right. Uh, hmm. Not Gerald Wilkins. Chucky Brown. Oh, oh, Chucky, Chucky Brown. Brown. The no, man no, with yeah. the record for playing with the most teams, right? Oh, he's, he had the record, I think. Jim Jackson has the record, right? No, I think. Um, what's his name? Jeff Green. No, nah, the from Washington's got it. The little point guard. Um, uh, the ones with Washington this year play with Charlotte. Um, Oh, Ish Smith. Ish Smith. So I yeah, think man. Right. Now, right. Chuck, yeah, yeah. Chucky Brown and Jim Jackson were next in line. I think. Yeah. Du double figure teams they played for. Yeah. Okay, this guy. I mean, there's a gr great bunch of centers in that 90s. You know, you talk about 
the 90s. It was, a, it was a big time for the big man, right? Okay? And this guy is probably not the best of them, but he's my favorite. He's my favorite of all those centers. Who am I talking about? Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing. <laughs> oh, so that's a classic card there. The- and Patrick... Uh, you, want another, you want another story? I got another story. Of course, of course. Okay, so... In nine, the same, it was the same year that I saw the Celts at Boston Garden. I saw Patrick Ewing at Madison Square Garden, and I was courtside for that. And the reason I was courtside for that was because at the time, my mum, who she went with me, uh, went with her overseas, um, worked for this Japanese. This is a long story, oh, not a long story. I'll shorten it. So she worked for this Japanese company, and her and they had a, they had an office in New York. And her, we we were going to New York. I actually yep. have family there. I've got family in New Jersey. But we went to New York, and um, her counterpart there happened to be best friends with none other than David Stern. Oh, wow. So it, the Knicks played the Magic at MSG. It was a sellout, 20,000 people, even though it was the Magic, who weren't very good at the time. Um, and we got tickets, and I still had the letter. David Stern got us the tickets and wrote us a letter and said, he, happy, to do, happy to provide these tickets to... To Matt and yeah, it was, that? so that's pretty oh, that's cool. amazing. It's that a letter probably, from David that Stern. That was probably in the David Stern, the late David the, Stern, the, the mustache days as well when he had that. Oh yeah, well 1990, that was 1990. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there you go. Nice. That's, that's amazing. All right, last card. All right, this is a tough one. We've pulled this pack, uh, this guy uh, in a packet. I think with Andrew Gaze when we pulled one of those ultra flares, right? Okay, he's a six foot. Two guard, um, had an 11-year career. Um, this is his Clippers card. He started off the Clippers, finished at the Memphis Grizzlies. His number 34 Ooh. is retired by the Memphis Tigers. Um, a role player for most of his career. Not Winston uh, Garland? Elliot Perry. Oh, socks. Oh, yeah. Elliot Perry, there you go. Elliot Perry with the long socks. Yeah, sort of, yeah he's good. Uh, I don't know whose moustache is uh, <laughs> dirt, dirt, dirtier, yours or his, mate. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's pretty good. You still haven't got rid of that mustache? Damn. Nah. Kept it since November last year, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> still annoying the missus every day, so I'll continue. <laughs> Naturally. That's, that's right. Well, good stuff, boys. That kind of takes us in the outro now. So, just wanted to apologise. There were a few people saying my microphone wasn't on last week. Well, it actually was on, but the volume was a little bit uh, low down there. I'm going to blame my daughter, I think, just for. I'm um, flicking a switch there, so I do apologise about that. Oh, um, good on you. No, nah, that's it. But wanted to just really thank everyone for tuning in. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the show, please make sure to like and subscribe on the YouTube channel or wherever you listen to the podcast. Um, just a reminder where we can be followed. If you want to check us out on Twitter, we're at Throwbacks Hoops. With an S. Uh, with an S. Instagram handle is throwback.hoops. Um, email address if you've got any questions, jersey suggestions, anything you like, feedback, whatever it is. Our email address is throwbackhoopspodcast at gmail.com. Um, Woods, why don't you take us away with your little plugs there and then we'll get on to Matt. Yeah, I mean, um, Patreon, I mean, if you want to jump on there and support us, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, TikTok, you know, uh, Woody underscore V83. I kind of just jump on there and, and showcase some of the jerseys and uh, cater to some of that younger uh, audience that, that uh, tune into our show. Thanks to everyone, man, for all the support. I mean, we're getting hundreds and hundreds of guys uh, and girls uh, downloading our show every week. So we really appreciate it. So, yeah. Right, good stuff, Woods. And Matt, over to you now. Where can sort of the, the viewers and the listeners sort of hear or read or listen to your stuff there? Where's, where's the best place for me? <laughs> well, it's the off season now. That's true. Um, probably not the best time to ask Well, that. yeah. So obviously, I'm still doing NBL One commentary as we, we talked about for the Inner West Bulls. So I do all their their home games on on actually on Wednesday. I'm doing the University Basketball League Grand Final between Sydney University and the University of Technology, which is actually going to be really some great young talent playing. In both teams, um, Iggy Mitchell for Sydney University is one notable, um, and a whole bunch of NBL. Ben Fakira, who you'd know, and Ben Jerome, and um, oh, it's just a whole bunch of guys that are playing NBL one on both teams. Um, Alexander Higgins, teacher who plays for the Bulls, great athlete, Jalen Galloway type of player. Um, so yeah, so that's that'll be on uh, on Unisport.tv, I think it is. Uh, and um, yeah, and obviously still doing a bit of writing for the Kings in, in the off season. Um, with some, uh, you know, just a bit of, I'm working on a bit of a season in review type of thing. I'm trying to get Chris Pongrass on the phone, but he's just completely, forget about it. He's, he's, they're going crazy with free agency at the moment, trying to sign guys. 
interestingly enough, um, Wani Swakalo Bullock signing with Illawarra. Oh, what? Wow. What? You just, you just ruined Woody's. Oh name. no! Literally, just literally, made, literally. I knew it was going. I knew it was happening. Oh, literally. What? Yeah, just announced oh, two that's years. That's really sad, so man. On, well, it probably player tells player. you that Cleveland won't be back for Illawarra. I think yeah, that's pretty yeah. obvious. Oh, yeah. Man. But yeah, that's a tough loss. Mm. You know, I mean, people. He's one of those classic guys. You sort of look at the stats and go, well, "What does he do?" But. Oh, he only, you know, Bryce Cott, he defended Bryce Cotton. He, I mean, yeah. go down, down the line, who this guy took out. You know, Josh Majet, Bryce Cotton, um, Tyler Harvey, like these guys that he oh. defended brilliantly. It's a big loss. You heard great, me. You, you, heard, you heard me. You heard me by you saying that. M, 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 M squared hurt me, man. You know what I mean? Like I just <laughs> got his. I just got his jersey agency, and everything. Oh. oh no! Oh, yeah. Woody, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. No, so anyway, yeah. so I'll be doing. I'll be doing some stuff, and then you know, we clutch We we might do a couple more podcasts. We're not sure. We, we sort of we, we a couple of years ago we were doing a bit of a history series with various teams, which was really really good. Um, and, and various people like obviously Cal Bruton and Brett Maher and a few other people. So I'm, I'm just keep an eye out for that. Potentially we might do some stuff with, uh, I'm trying to get um, Brian Curl and Leroy Loggins to do a Brisbane awesome. one with me. So awesome. yeah, I'm, I'm good friends with both of them. So hopefully, yeah. And that's one of the things about, about basketball, I guess. And you know, you mentioned it, Woody. And I love your story because you talked about the inclusivity of basketball. And I think, that that for me is probably one of the big things that's kept me going all these years is the people and, yep. and the people that i've met have been extraordinary you know oh, yeah. I'm so lucky to know some of the legends and the all-time greats and i get to interview people like rc buford and brian colangelo and uh, and so many more and have great relationships with so many people and and it, it's it's for some reason the sport you know it, it's got that part of it you can be from anywhere you can not played NBL and, and yet, you know, um, have great relationships with a whole bunch of people. And I think that's huge yeah. and needs to be celebrated. So it's and, great, yeah, great hearing your story. And Matt, my brother, man, like o over the last, you know, 30 plus years, you've been such a great servant and uh, ambassador Thanks, for the, for the game of basketball in, in, in Sydney. You know, I, I, I know you're a Sydney guy. Are you saying Wollongong <laughs> University, right? But the point uh, is... Well, it's true. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to Thank you for everything you've done, and like you know, every time you know the Clutch Roundtable is is on my podcast. I'm, I cannot wait. I just sit there and I want to listen to it and and take it all in and and all you've done for this community and 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 uh, um, putting the game forward and the NBL in in uh, the forefront of people's mind has just been amazing. So thank you. Thanks, man. That's really kind. Yeah. I really appreciate it. you. You guys keep doing what you're doing. Love it. Um, yeah. I mean, the the cards, Woody. I'm not sure. You know. But you love, mate. It's all about the passion, right? It's yeah. all it's all about the passion. You got me a few times, so yeah. Kudos to you, man. Seriously. Good stuff. Well, no, and and Rob, keep going with it, mate. You you you're right. You, you're getting better, my friend. No. It just just look. It, it's and as I said to you before, it, it's the more you do it, um, keep keep my best advice, and I said this to you. Keep listening to yourself. Mm. I mean, it sounds a bit funny, but it's the only way you really learn and pick up things. And that's how I learned, you know, all those years ago. Um, I'm always so, conscious if there's a big play and I feel like I've shouted too loudly, like I'm going to go home and play that. I really reacted on that dunk. And when you play it back, no, it actually sort of it fit well in the moment, you know, because you talk about moment. shouting. I mean, look at, look at, look at this idiot. I mean, you know, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Went viral, it, 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 said, it, yeah. Well, yeah, which is, you know, that's what it's all about. But um, no, nah, you, you're doing a great job, mate. And it's, it's good that we've got passionate people, that are involved and an NBL one look it's NBL one East it's gonna the Waratah League was bad for a long time but I'll tell you what there's some talent coming into the NBL one East Absolutely. and there's some it's a lot lot better and I love the fact it's way more professional now the NBL's got their hands on it yep. and um, next couple of years I think it's gonna go to another level so which is gonna be fantastic for the you know for as a development pathway which is what obviously they want the NBL one to be absolutely uh, well said Matt so alright really appreciate it then boys um, look uh, obviously we'll be back next week um, yeah as we said sort of please make sure you, you check out Matt's stuff and everything there final word Woods before we sign off got a big guest coming on soon right we've got a big guest yeah I'm still not going to tease it because we don't have the date confirmed but um, he may have a T and a J in his initials there and may have been a bit of an NBL legend but I'll just leave it at that <laughs> yeah. Matt will probably know who we're talking about there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. good stuff nice. alright well thanks everyone for tuning in um, peace out from the Throwback Hoops group Respect. Respect.